Boom. Welcome everyone. Mate talk time. So good to be before you all. Hope everybody is well. There's, I've, I've had to set up lighting because normally I like to have the, the light, natural daylight sort of come through. It's later in the day. Just to tell you quickly, I filmed the whole thing. I'm in, my, in the office uh, on my own today and uh, I was soft focused. So this is, I'm, this is now I'm doing all this again. <laughs> so it's like deja vu, but it's all good. It's all good. Just zenning myself. I'm gonna go one more time, so here we go. Um, I wanna start off, well firstly I wanna start off by saying I have my mate, I hope you have an awesome drink. Calm, here we go, zen. It's, uh, it's not as fun when I'm on my own because you know I have to think of everything, whereas when I've got Hannah or Grace or, or Sandra, they're, uh, they're helping me out. But it's all good. It's all here to teach us. I um, I spoke about how I love f um, florals and fragrance, and a uh, very good friend Ed, who I've met through Oligarch. This is Ed, a very dashing man. He's uh, tall and uh, always well dressed, and loves florals in his fragrances. Now he gave me this sample here, Ed. It's glorious. This thing is off the hook. A big recommendation. I uh, have been testing it since he gave me. This thing was full, all right? So it's it's a little bit, it's about a third uh, gone. The, it's called uh, Le, Le Abstract. Le Abstract, and this one here is Belle Arme, which is beautiful soul. When I test it, it has a very clear floral signature to it. When I first started smelling, I'm like, mm, wow, I'm, I'm smelling jasmine. I'm smelling the sort of white, slight white flower. I'm also smelling this ylang ylang that has like a chocolatey sort of vibe to it. I feel like this yellow flower is there. And then as it migrates, it just goes into this beautiful bouquet of florals. I had a look before starting. There's no ylang ylang. There is no jasmine. Uh, it is a beautiful floral, but now it's like, ah, it's actually orris. So those who love iris in their fragrance it has both the iris and the orris butter so you're getting that green plus you're getting that more creaminess component of the flower itself it does have chocolate so i did get that part right it has no jasmine but i do get like a slight jasmine touch to it there are things like frankincense and cardamom i don't detect those ginger i don't detect that it does have a little bit of vanilla or tonka bean in the base so it does have that sort of slight vanilla touch but this is a divine floral fragrance. So if you haven't come across this particular brand, now I, I sort of did some more research. It's, um, uh, the gentleman has a, a YouTube channel, it's called You Smells Good, but he's decided to come out with uh, three fragrances. Uh, I don't know what the other ones are like, but I know that this one here, we don't have it in this country, or I'm not aware that we do have this particular brand. So I'm gonna say that Ed, had this shipped in I'm making sure that my shot looks good yes i look good we're moving on Re big recommendation so ladies i think this will be an easy easy love boys it does have more of a floral touch and i'm going to talk a little bit more about that but i recommend it to you if you would like to have a fragrance that is slightly different quite unique bim bam boom all right so for those who saw this particular episode I had an opportunity to meet with Renaud Salmon from Amouage. I said that like a boss, didn't I? <laughs> I said like a Frenchman, that's what I did. Um, so uh, with uh, Renault, I was in um, I was in Cannes for the, the trade show that was there. Basically what happened is we finished our uh, France Fragrance Tour 2023, the last year. And then from there we went straight to Cannes and I went to the trade show. Before going to Cannes, I sent an email and I thought, you know what? Not an email, a DM. Um, I thought, I'm gonna roll the dice. And I said to Renault, I understand you're gonna be at Cannes. Any chance that we could meet up to, um, I, so I could do an interview. This is the backstory to this particular episode. And I wanna give you more as to the, the, I guess, the, what was I feeling going into it. Those who have seen the, that particular episode, there's that heartbeat that happens through it. Um, that's me genuinely being nervous. I just wanted to translate that for you as an audience to, I guess, make you feel that as I'm walking down this corridor, I was a little bit shaking in my boots because what had happened is that I received a message from Reynolds saying that he was going to move some of his appointments around and he gave it to allow me time to come in for an interview. Um, 
so I had 40 minutes. I knew that I had 40 minutes as a window. And I, so I went from, when I got that message, it went from complete, you know, ecstatic elation uh, to dread and nerves. Like, what am I gonna do? Because I didn't want to sort of just rehash a lot of the questions that I'd seen him answer in other interviews. I wanted this to be a little bit different. So what I did, this is us at the Franz Fragrance Tour closing dinner. We were in this beautiful Michelin star restaurant in Grasse. 12 perfume lovers around the table and I thought this is a great opportunity for me to ask the question. If I get a chance to meet with Renaud, what question would I ask him? Not knowing that I had inadvertently pulled a grenade and thrown, and thrown it into the room because boom, all of a sudden a very heated converse or discussion began to emerge and there were two camps that were formed. Some that said that they weren't, I guess, happy with some of the creative directions that Renaud had was doing and others were going, no, I love it. No, I'm in the I love camp. I mean, I have a number of the fragrances that have been released since his reign. I do have a number of fragrances from the Christopher Chong era, but yeah, I have a lot that actually stuff that, that, that Renaud has been behind. And it was interesting in that, uh, like, so we were in a private area. I mean, this is the photo. So we were in this private area. So we had a chance to, to, to go into, a, a, I guess, a deep discussion on this very subject. So it gave me an opportunity to write down some things, knowing that these were some concerns, I guess, that people had when it comes to the work that Renaud was doing. Um, what turned out was, and this is where I was hoping it would go, in a conversation about the the honor and respect that's being done to the some um, the Omani natural ingredients such as frankincense. The other thing too, and I and I want to because uh, there's some heavy comments being said about Renaud himself. Let me just say I've only met him once, so I you know he's not a mate or anything of that nature, but he allowed this interview to happen, and. When I when he said that he would move things around, no, those meetings were still intact. Now he was there for work, meaning that he was actually having interviews or not interviews, having meetings with suppliers and stuff like that. So you know, big deal stuff. Um, he was taking time off his lunch. So if you look at my watch, you can see that it is 1:30, and he was going to give me 40 minutes. So basically, he wasn't going to have lunch. He was just going to eat something sort of quickly to keep him moving. Um, in the end, I said, no, no, look, we'll just do this 20 minutes because I don't want you to go without. So he was prepared to sacrifice his lunch so that he could do this interview. So uh, he was very open. He was very genuine in, his, in the conversation we had. I mean, at the end of the day, I really sort of pushed tightly the conversation that I wanted, the story arc that I wanted to develop. Um, so he was just super open, very willing to answer everything. And overall, I just thought he was an awesome man. And I do love, so me, my vote is on the work that he's currently doing. I actually think that he's taking Amwaj forward in a very crowded field. So uh, right now, as everyone has noticed, uh, niche perfumery has exploded. It is actually the growth. So if you look at, per so let me give you a bit of data here. Um, so if you look at perfume as a whole, um, with designers was dominating, designers still dominate, however, the growth is coming all from niche. And if you look at, I mean, Exxon is a classic example of that, you see the amount of new brands that are coming onto the field. So, and now here's another one. Have a look at the movie Blade Runner. The first one with, uh, with Harrison Ford, actually they're both with Harrison Ford, but the, the first one with uh, Ridley Scott. The brands that are being represented in Blade Runner, Pan Am, Atari, I mean, Coke is still around. Those brands were, were selected because they were big brands at the time of filming. Pan Am and Atari are both gone. So it gives you an idea that if, as, an, as a business, if you don't stay relevant, then you're, you, move, you just get left behind. So I feel that Amouage and the work that Renard is doing is on that relevancy track. And so anyway, I think Renard is awesome. Boom, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Moving on, all right, allora. So I don't have my egg timer because like I said, this is take two, uh, but here we go, announcements. This coming Monday, we are doing a live with the great, not the great, actually, the, there, is, there is a great Marzano, but this is Big Mike. So, uh, so just to distinguish the two gentlemen. So Big Mike is uh, an absolute perfume aficionado, and in particular, all things 
uh, Perfumes de Mali. So he has always been telling me how much he loves Perfumes de Mali, uh, showing me all the new stuff that's coming out. So he, um, I actually invited him and said, how, how would you feel about if you navigate us through uh, during a live all things Perfume de Mali. And I thought it would be great if I could smell and experience at the same time as you so that I can uh, be navigated through it all. Um, I reached out to the beautiful people of Libertine and they were very generous to send me the samples, they're the distributor here in Australia, send me samples of all the fragrances that we're gonna be discussing. There are seven. So for those people who love Perfume de Mali or if you want to understand more about Perfume de Mali like I want to, then uh, join me on the live. Here are the dates, or here is the date, and here are the times. Sem, you're a good man. I appreciate the fact that you wrote to me and mentioned that that I had the times wrong. Uh, in Paris, unfortunately, or that in the central sort of part of Europe, it's gonna be 11 p.m., not a.m. So I apologize last time around. This is, these should be the correct times now. Boom, okay. Um, so that's this Monday. Look forward to seeing everybody there. That would be awesome. I mentioned Libertine, so Libertine have been very gracious to donate a full bottle of 500, oh, sorry, a full bottle of Herba Gold, so a 100 ml bottle of Herba Gold, $500 worth. So those people who would like to win this, there are high chances, because it's only for Aussies. There have been a number of orders that have come through, but the odds are really good. So if you are interested in buying any Zerjoff, either a 50 ml or a 100 ml, jump on the Libertine website, use the code NFC Zerjoff and you'll go into the draw to, to, uh, to win that uh, Herba Gold. Now the, the comp finishes or the promotion finishes this coming Sunday. Sunday midnight is the last, uh, that's when it'll close. And I might even see if I can get the results so that I can do it on Monday morning during a live. We'll see what I can do. But worst case scenario, uh, I'll do it uh, during um, the next Mate talk, all right? So we'll put everybody into a wheel and bada bing. And that is me, boom, that's it. Good luck, everyone. Now, have a look at these. While you look at that, I'm gonna take a drink. I get a lot of questions from, um, from people saying, what's a good fragrance? I'm going to a, like a special function, I'm going to a, a wedding, blah, blah, blah. What's a good fragrance that I would wear? And I always, well, most of the times, I say Radical Rose. And for those who are you know, uh, OGs of the channel know that I'm always banging on about Radical Rose. I continue to vouch, Radical Rose on a man is amazing. On a woman, forget about it, all right? So it's a beautiful, very clean, crisp rose fragrance, Mattia Premier, incredible fragrance. Have a look at this episode that I created to give you a better understanding. Now, this motivated me to talk about uh, florals in fragrance. Now for women it's easy. So this I'm calling this segment Instant Love for Women Who Love Florals But Pure Magic for Men Who... All right, let me start that again. I, I, I cooked it. Let me do it again. You ready? Instant Love for Women Who Love Florals But Pure Magic for Men Who Are Unsure About Florals in Their Fragrance. Yeah, there you go. I, I said it right. So in line with what Ed gave me, the sample, which has this beautiful iris note, but really a beautiful bouquet of florals that's in that. And on a man, it works amazing. So on a, on a strong masculine man like me, it uh, works amazing. I was wearing this the other day, actually, I was suited up. Uh, I had my suit on, tie, I was wearing this. I, you, know, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you guys do this, I do this where I can smell my fragrance and I'm like, man, I smell good. <laughs> I'm rocking this fragrance, you know? So, um, so I was rocking this fragrance. This, this is phenomenal. And I'm gonna go one more. Sandra vouches that I was rocking this fragrance. So, uh, so a good floral fragrance is absolute pure magic on a man. And I'm gonna put forward some suggestions here. On a woman, on, for a woman, easy for a man will be magic. Let me begin. First one is this. This is Black Jade, all right? So first one is Radical Rose, all right? Just to give you a heads up. Try out Radical Rose, I promise you won't be disappointed. Now, for men who are like, you know what? I don't want too many florals, you know? It's just not for me. It's, I'm not that kind of guy. All right, start here. Start with Black Jade. The brand is Luban. It is a French brand. It's been around since, it's been around since this long. Uh, they were perfumers. The original uh, Monsieur Farragon was a perfumer to the French court. Then along came Pierre Lubon and he then took over the business. He kept all the original recipes from Monsieur Farragon 
and one of them was Black Jade, which was a fragrance that was created for Marie Antoinette. Why is it called Black Jade? I'm gonna leave you in suspense because I am gonna do a full episode on this particular fragrance. There's a beautiful um, historical story behind it. Uh, why is it called Black Jade? There is a cool story re regarding that. Uh, but this, and why was this fragrance so Marie Antoinette? When it opens up, it has, so, so boys, all right? When it opens up, you're gonna be comfortable because it opens up with a citrus cardamom style. There is a slight floral in the background, but so far it's more the spicy and citrus that really takes shape. Then as the fragrance begins to emerge, you are getting a beautiful rose jasmine interplay. However, the base notes are surrounding that, that, those florals and not letting it become way too floral. So you have things like patchouli, I think there's also musk, ba -ba boom, what did I write? Uh, ambers, uh, sandalwood. So these are notes that can play on anybody, okay? So you'll find that as a floral fragrance, it's toned down. It's not excessively floral, so a man can comfortably wear this and not feel that the, the florals are getting ahead of it. On a woman, uh, if you, as a woman would wear this, just gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. Before Sandra left, as I was prepping uh, on take one, uh, before Sandra, she sprayed this one, all right? So works really well on me. My son loves wearing this one too, so also works fantastic on a woman. Lubon's Black Jade, the fragrance for Marie Antoinette. Boom, let me move on. So now we're gonna move a little bit more, a little bit more on the floral. So we're gonna go deeper and deeper into florals. Uh, the next one is, of course, I have to do Fuea, 1833. Argentinian brand, a lot of their um, natural oils they draw from Patagonia. Th this one here, this is a new inclusion and I have been loving this. So for those who like jasmine, but not overtly jasmine, sometimes jasmine can be a little bit indolic, a little bit lightheaded. This one here, because of the, it has a lemon sort of zest on the opening uh, with a uh, basil herbal component to it. So the jasmine is there, but it opens up aromatic. It opens up just really super enticing. It does come back from that. The jasmine begins to emerge more, but it's more a jasmine breeze than it is a heady, you know, at nighttime jasmine. Actually, last night I was riding my bike and I was, I, I rode past this. It was late at night and this heady jasmine, I, it was like this, Think of it like a cloud, and I went through this cloud of jasmine, and I'm like, whoa, who is doing that? So I had to, I looped back, and I'm trying to find, it was dark, I couldn't see, but who is this plant? This, this massive jasmine bush was there, and I was talking to it and telling it it was doing an awesome job. Uh, but it's, so it's not like that. This is a jasmine on the breeze. So the lemon scent that's there, the herbal basil component of it, the jasmine. This is not a room filler. So this is perfect for a first date. This is perfect for a, a, an office. And when I say first date, because this will blend in with you. Sometimes people like wearing like a silver or a, or a, or a, a white musk. Uh, I find that this, well, I've been finding this settles beautifully on my skin. The jasmine is there, but it does dry down to a, like a slightly animalic, um, but um, a, a floral musk. So it's a beautiful floral jasmine. Just gorgeous. Honestly, try it out. Lu oh, did I tell you the name? It's uh, Luz Sin Freno, which means breaks without lights. Um, why? I don't know. I'll, I'm gonna do a big lineup on all things Fuea, so I'll, I'll discover why exactly is it called Luz Sin Freno. But really good fragrance, big recommendation. New inclusion, and I have been wearing it constantly. Very much enjoying it. Boom. All right, next one. So moving again, so deeper into all things floral, the next one is 724 by Maison Francis Cujon. This one does not get a lot of love. If you look at Fragrantica, there is a, excuse me, there's a lot of um, yeah, unhappy people with this one here. This is the, again, excuse me. I'm going fast because I would want to get this baby moving. This is the reality. This is a very linear fragrance. Citrusy, aldehyde, jasmine, musk. And where it, how that opens, so citrus, a little bit of aldehydes and jasmine, almost like a solar note in there. And then it goes into this white musk place. That's how it starts. That's how it starts, that's how it goes to, that's where it ends. And that's where it is. All right, so it hasn't sort of done too many movements around. The interesting thing about this fragrance is that no matter who is wearing it, 
it is, the sillage on this is phenomenal, the longevity is fantastic, and it is a compliment getter. End of story. I mean, so Sandra wears this, and I'm like, whoa, babe, what are you wearing? And she's like, yeah, 724. It smells amazing on her. It's got this beautiful, clean freshness about her. I wear this, and, Sam, and this is a true story. I'll wear it in the morning, and she's done this a few times to me. Wear it in the morning, she's like, whoa, what are you wearing? 724. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. So it's got this beautiful, clean vibe to it, a slight white floral in there, yada, yada. Then deeper in the day, she goes, well, what are you wearing now? I'm like, 724. I mean, we've been out and about, so I haven't had a chance to spray anything else. 724. My son wears this fragrance. It smells amazing on him too. So this is a fragrance that can go men, woman, whatever it may be. There is a, as I said, an aldehydic jasmine component to it. There is a citrusy sort of vibe in there, so it does have a light citrus to it, but a really great compliment getter. Beautiful fragrance to wear on a sunny day. I haven't worn it in winter. It's more of a sunny, breezy kind of day. The best way to describe this, actually, before um, Hanno, she, uh, one of my editors, she tested it, and her comment, which I totally agree, when she said this, I'm like, man, this is on point. It's like being in a five or six star hotel. So a bougie, bougie place and walking in and just smelling just this, the not, it's not, it's more than just a clean smell. So it's more than just clean sheets. This is now, it transcends it. For me, I see big, so a hotel room, big windows overlooking a beautiful metropolis. For me, it's New York. I'm seeing Grand, um, Central Park in front of me. Uh, so it's, it's that kind of vibe to it. So anyway. As a white floral with aldehydes on a man, boom, this will work. On a woman, it's gorgeous. All right, boom, bada boom, moving on, doing good. All right, I'm gonna stop for a second. Holy cow. Someone said once, excuse me, they watched that, this episode here of Zurjov, and they said that uh, they had to put me on double speed, and that sounded like my normal speed. They, they, so the guy was saying, You must be a very slow talker. Um, I said, just watch Mate talk to find out what my pace really is like. Because when I get hypo, it's like, <laughs> good luck. Good luck to try and catch me. All right, the next one is this one here. Now we are moving deeper into floral. So boys who are really uncomfortable, I don't recommend too much. Boys who are now a little bit more, they want to experiment. So they've had radical rows and now you want to move deeper in. I would recommend this one here, Ylang Ylang Nosy Bay. I don't have the extra Extrait de Parfum. No, I do. This is the Extrait de Parfum. Uh, I don't have the Eau de Parfum. And that's because one of my editors actually got it on loan. I have a library system people can borrow. And, sh and uh, she's taken the, um, that one there. I like wearing it. So it is, a, I guess, Ylang Ylang is deemed as a female fragrance. Oh, sorry, a female um, note. Of course, it's floral. But I love wearing it. So I did the review on this. I did talk about how this particular fragrance, the Ylang Ylang from Nosy Bay, has a chocolatey kind of vibe to it. So it's a beautiful, fleshy, white, uh, yellow floral. It's, it has a very sensuous uh, tone to it, but a man can comfortably wear that. The EDP, yes. The Extrait de Parfum, no. <laughs> this is girl only. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Anybody, you can wear whatever you want. This man doesn't wear it. I've tried to wear this one. It's way too sensual. It's way too, um, for me, this is feminine power, all right? So the women in my family all loved wearing this. The, the, my editors, who are young ladies, also love wearing this. So they, they, on the scent bar, they actually like to, to spray this. You can tell it's an extrait de parfum. So you don't need a lot, and it's been hit pretty hard, all right? So great projection, great sillage. I did spray it earlier. So think this beautiful Ylang Ylang, yellow floral, fleshy, so very thick leaf. Think of a magnolia leaf, fleshy, and you're just crushing this baby in your hands. I don't know if I crush that, will I get the Ylang Ylang? So I've never seen Ylang Ylang in nature, but in smelling this, it feels like you're crushing this Ylang Ylang flower and smelling it, like you would do a rose, for instance. So I, I think that's, where I'm, that's the, 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 the connection that I'm doing. There is vanilla in the bag, so it does have this beautiful vanilla touch. Ladies, if you want something that is uh, sensual, that is beautiful for an evening, if you're wearing an evening gown, Ylang Ylang Nosy Bay Extrait is glorious. Boys, uh, I, would re I would recommend to you the EDP. It's a good t-shirt wearing, very casual, just easygoing fragrance. 
great for winter. Um, I wouldn't, I haven't worn it in summer. It's, it's way too heady, too, uh, too rich in its scent profile, but a glorious fragrance for a man. Let me move on. All right, boom, boom. For those who missed the uh, unboxing of Torino 23, you can see our live reaction, myself and my wife. My wife didn't like it, but my, you do it. Watch the episode, it's funny. Um, she, so this is still not a fragrance for her. However, I've fallen in love with this baby. So what I love about this, and you can see my response there, and I, sorry, go back. What I love about this, for those who love tuberose, the difference is the tuberose is the central note with its supporting characters being both a jasmine and an ylang ylang. There, it's like holding up the structure, but it's not the ylang ylang as the central note. In fact, it is this beautiful round component of ylang ylang, sorry, of tuberose, ylang ylang, and jasmine. It's very indolic. So when it opens up, there is some cardamom and some nutmeg. You're getting a little bit of that spice. Slight indolic coming through as it begins to dry down. All of a sudden, this white floral emerges. Very heady, but just divine. When it comes to sillage, when it comes to its projection, when it comes to its longevity, it is phenomenal. Don't overspray; it'll blow your brain. <laughs> For me, I sprayed Max's three, but one day I sprayed twice. And again, Sandra's like, I can't believe you're wearing that fragrance again. So for her, she is very, it, it's very distinct. You can, you can smell it in the air. I wrote some other stuff here too, too. Um, I wrote some other stuff here too. Oh, that's what it is. So the beautiful thing about it, so why I would, so a woman can wear this comfortably, but boys, because it has this patchouli sort of mustiness in the base, along with some woods, it actually, were, I think it worked well. I know it works well on this man. I think it would work well on most men. And I also know when Ed Tez um, uh, mentioned that this reminded him of this, hence why he gave me this sample. So it has this beautiful, rich bouquet. Uh, anyway, big recommendation. I will do, a, actually there is a part four coming up on all things Zero Jeff, and I will include that in the, the breakup. One thing that I love about that fragrance too, is its evolution and dance. Unlike 724, which is very linear, where it starts, where it goes, and where it ends, same, same, same. Whereas this baby here, it really, it just, that opening, that nutmeg and cardamom really is there. The slight florals begin to emerge, then the florals are there, then they back off and the patchouli's coming around. As a, as a, a fragrance that you enjoy, gorgeous. Boom, boom, boom. All right, last one. So now, okay, boys, for those who are like, you know what, I don't, Marcelo, I don't want any florals in my fragrance. I want it to be barbershop and I want it to be aromatic, bada bing, let me give you this one. So now for, for girls or ladies who want a floral in there, but they want to bring back, I guess, that bouquet of florals, then I'd recommend to use Zaharoff's Black Rose. What this does in true classic Zaharoff style is this glorious lavender note. If you're not used to that lavender note, if you know, so it really works on that architecture of signature palm. If you're not comfortable, well, not so much, if you're not familiar with that lavender, it will take you by surprise. I know the first time I experienced um, uh, the uh, Zaharoff palm, I'm like, whoa, lavender, aromatic. It looked like grabs you by the throat. So this starts in a very similar way. The advantage is, they, well not the advantage, but what happens is that it begins to come back and then that glorious rose note begins to emerge. The, the black rose, what it's referencing is a town called Halfeti, it's in Turkey. There is a black rose that grows there. One day I will go there. Um, I've only heard stories, I've seen these, this, this, the image of this black rose. There is a spiciness. So that lavender aromatic component, because it starts off very strong, and as it comes back, it always remains in the fragrance. So it does have a beautiful barbershop aromatic quality to it. But now that rose is also in there and the whole thing is tempered beautifully. Boys who don't like um, any florals in their fragrances, I'd recommend you start with this. That rose is distinct and definite, but it doesn't overpower the whole uh, composition. Uh, and it doesn't go away from being that aromatic, sort of more woods-like fragrance that most men t tend to enjoy. But a beautiful, and can I just say, this bottle is, it is bouge on overdrive. It's just very tactile, you know, anyway. It really, it looks beautiful on your shelf, by the way. Boom, bada boom, 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 done. 
I got so close. <laughs> I was trying to beat that the uh, the the time of timing out of me. So, financier, my dearest and most beloved financier, may I please buy a new camera because this one here is driving me crazy. Anyway. Thank you everyone, hope you enjoyed that. That was take two, as I said, and I, I that was a lot more efficient. Let me just say, the, 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 yeah, that was a lot more efficient. Anyway, thanks everyone. Don't forget the live that's happening this coming uh, Monday. I look forward to seeing everybody. Well, I don't look, well, I can't see you, but I look forward to your comments. Uh, Big Mike will be on, so I look forward to hearing all about PDM. I'd love to get your feedback for those. I know there's a lot of people who absolutely love Perfume de Mali. So yeah, jump on in so that you can share your love about this beautiful fragrance house. Grazie mille everybody. We'll see you guys all on the next Monday talk.